Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And what we're gonna be talking about in this video is adding fractions. So here's the problem we're gonna be doing. We have seven over 32 plus five over 80. And let's suppose you had to add these uh, fractions pretty quickly and you had a calculator as well. So let's say you needed to get an answer in like 30 seconds. So what are some different approaches you could take to actually calculate the correct answer? Well, I'm gonna kind of leave that as an open-ended question because there's really not one specific way. There's a couple good techniques that are um, probably your best bet but what I want to do is actually just kind of challenge you. Feel free, again, to use a calculator. How can you get the right answer to this problem pretty quickly? Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second. And then we are going to look at a couple different options to add fractions very, very quickly. Again, with the aid of a calculator. Um, also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, Make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and uh, subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's suppose before I show the right answer here that you can't do this in 30 seconds, no big deal. Let's take the pressure off. Let me just ask you, can you um, actually just add these fractions in any way? So let's say you, maybe you need a minute or two. Feel free to take whatever time uh, you need to add these uh, fractions because that's kind of a question in and of itself. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. So we have 7 over 32 plus 5 over 80. What is the correct answer? Well, I'm actually going to show you two versions of the correct answer. One is in fraction form, so we have 9 over 30, uh, 32, and here is a decimal equivalent. If you take 9 and divide it by 32, you'll get 0.28125. So either one of these answers is correct, and um, again, I didn't specify that I wanted a fraction as the final answer. I just wanted you to add these fractions, and again, I did tell you you could use a calculator, so a decimal uh, is fine. So if you got either one of these answers, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face in A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a fraction genius and you can add fractions very quickly. Okay, so this particular problem has, uh, you know, uh, I think it's just a good review problem about fractions, adding and subtracting fractions. And there are different approaches. Now, if you didn't have a calculator, pretty much your options are going to be somewhat the same. Uh, but again, there could be a lot of work involved. But let's going to just take a look at some options here or a couple um, kind of obvious ways to approach this problem. So the first is when you add or subtract fractions, the denominators, these bottom numbers in the fractions, need to be the same. You can clearly see these numbers are not the same. So we're going to have to get the lowest common denominator. So if you were thinking, I got to get that LCD stuff or figure that thing out, well, that's very, very good. So that is one approach. Okay, you can find the LCD and rewrite these fractions and then obviously compute the correct answer. So if you're thinking in those terms, that's very, very good. However, you do have a calculator. Another approach you could do is convert these fractions into decimals and then add the decimals. Now, another thing you could do is this right here. Now, what is this? Well, I'll kind of leave this as a little um, kind of uh, enticing, intriguing little mystery for now. But this is a, probably one of my favorite things in mathematics. And if you've been following me uh, for any time on YouTube or if you're new to my YouTube channel, first of all, welcome. Thank you very much uh, for viewing this video and hopefully you are a subscriber. And if you've been following me for a while, you know I do a lot of fraction problems using this particular technique. I call it the bow tie technique. And if you've never seen this before, you definitely want to stick around. So this is kind of a shortcut method as well, but there isn't any one absolute right way to do this problem. Again, you do have a calculator and the objective is to get an answer. So let's go ahead and take a look at these uh, various approaches and we'll start off by uh, talking about the LCD. Okay, so is this the quickest way to do this problem in 30 seconds? I'm gonna tell you right off the bat, no, it's not. Okay, so let's just take a look at the problem right here. Let's suppose 
You said, oh, I'm, I'm going to go and figure this out. I'm going to get the LCD. And you just jumped into the prompt, right? So you said, okay, 32 and 80. I'm going to have to figure out the LCD between 32 and 80. And for some of you might there uh, out here, you might be saying, that's not the way I would find the LCD. Well, I'll address, I think I'm going to address your question here in just one second. So let's just go ahead and figure out what is the LCD between these two denominators. So how do we do that? Well, that's a whole separate question in and of itself. But basically what you have to do is you have to prime factor each one of these. Uh, if you need help with uh, finding the LCD, if you're already kind of lost with fractions, let me give you a couple quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of fraction videos on my YouTube channel, but uh, my best uh, kind of recommendation is check out my Math Foundations course. I go over full, complete instruction, not only on fractions, but basic uh, math skills like percent, place value, all that kind of stuff that you've likely forgotten. Uh, no big deal, but you got to strengthen your basic skills if you expect to succeed in more advanced courses like algebra. But anyways, uh, here we have 32 and 80. What we're going to do is prime factor 32 and 80. And uh, what we're looking at here is what we call a factor tree. So 32 is equal to 2 to the fifth, right? So these are all prime numbers or prime factors of 32. And you can see I just broke that down. But 32 is equal to 2 to the fifth, i.e. 2 times itself. 5 times is 32. So we want to write these things as powers, okay? And then 80 is uh, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is, of course, 2 to the fourth times 5, all right? Uh, now, I'm kind of, you know, going quickly through this uh, because hopefully you know how to find the LCD of two numbers. If you do not, you absolutely need to know how to find the LCD. Uh, and, you know, you, because oftentimes you're not going to have your calculator available. You just simply need to understand this stuff. But anyways, uh, hopefully you know what I am doing here. But uh, here we have the prime factors of each of our denominators, 2 to the 5th. And then 80 is 2 to the 4 times 5. So how do we find the LCD? Well, the lowest common denominator, what we have to do is have each one of our prime factors represented. So here I have a 2 to the 5th, and here I have a 2 to the 4th. So this is kind of confusing for students. We have, well, 2 to the 5th or 2 to the 4th, do we need both of those in our LCD? No, you only need the highest power of this number. So we have 2 here and 2 here, so we always select the highest power, which of course is 2 to the 5th, so we don't have to worry about 2 to the 4th, and then we also need a 5. So 2 to the 5th is 32, so 32 times 5 is 160. Okay, so that is our LCD, meaning that we have to rewrite our original fractions with the LCD of 160, right? So how do we do that? Well, 80 times 2 will get us a 160. So if I multiply the denominator by 2, I'm going to have to multiply this numerator by 2. So that becomes uh, 5 times 2, which is 10. And then here, 32, uh, we need to multiply by 5. That becomes a 160. So we're going to multiply the numerator by 5. So 5 times 7 is 35. Now we have common denominators. You clearly can see this is not the fastest way to add these fractions. But here we have... Um, a common denominator says we can just simply add the numerator. So 35 plus 10 is 45 over 160. And then looking at this fraction, you're saying, you know what? I think I can reduce this. So I'm going to reduce it down to 9 over 32. Now, if you took that path, right, that's very, very good. But that is the long path, right? Just, you know, just like if you're leaving one city, going to another place, you know, you're going from point A to point B. There's all kinds of routes you can take, right? Uh, this particular route that we just talked about is like the long route. Okay, that's definitely not the best approach. But let's go ahead and continue on and talk about the LCD as well. But let's um, talk about doing something smart when it comes to fractions, especially adding and subtracting fractions. Uh, matter of fact, multiplying and dividing doesn't make a difference. Anytime you're dealing with a fraction problem, always reduce the fractions, okay, before you even start. So here we have 7 over 32 plus 5 over 80. If some of you are saying, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, 5 over 80, you can reduce that down to 1 over 16. If you were thinking in those terms, that's outstanding. Okay, so we're going to reduce this fraction, 5 over 80, to 1 16th. So now our problem becomes this, which is so much easier than what I just uh, got done doing. So 7 over 32 plus 1 over 16, 
hopefully you can say, oh wow, 16 times two is 32. So in order to get common denominators here, all I have to do is multiply this denominator by two and this numerator by two. So one over 16 is the same thing as two over 32. And look here, I can simply add the numerators, which is nine over 32, and I am done. Okay, so instead of all this work up here, okay, I made my life much, much easier by reducing this fraction. So if you're able to do this pretty quickly, that is a good route or, uh, you know, definitely, um, you know, always want to uh, reduce fractions before you start. So hopefully some of you uh, took this path and you probably could do this in maybe 30 seconds. So I'm not going to totally discount the LCD method. I think it, uh, you know, we got kind of lucky here because the denominators were kind of easy to work with. But in general, if you need to go get a quick answer, um, the LCD is oftentimes going to be much more challenging to get, even if you can reduce fractions than what we just did here. Okay, so let's move on and talk about decimals. Okay, so here, again, I said you can use your calculator. So we have 7 over 32 plus 5 over 80. So yes, you could reduce this, but if you're already kind of um, of the mindset, you're like, you know what, I'm just going to use my calculator and turn these into decimals. No need to even reduce this. You can just simply use your calculator and take 7 divided by 32. When you do that, you're going to get 0.21875. And then you take 5 divided by 80, you're going to get 0 0.0625. And then, of course, we can just add these two decimals on our calculator, and you're going to get 0 0.28125. So is this equivalent to our uh, fraction answer? Yes, it is. So 9 over 32, we take 9 divided by th uh, 32. In your calculator, you see you're going to get the answer 0 0.28125. 28125. So, uh, you know, you got to be very, um, oh, what's the word? I'm not trying to say sneaky, but you got to be very, uh, uh, you know, accurate in terms of reading the directions. Okay. I don't even know if that's the right word, <laughs> accurate. You got to focus on the directions. What, in other words, you got to ask yourself what is allowed, what's not allowed. Because if your teacher or the test or the exam doesn't say, um, you know, express your answer as a fraction. Now, of course, if you have a multiple choice test, it's A, B, C, and all you see is fractions here, well, having a decimal is not going to be the best route because what, what I can do is I could work in decimals, but then I'm going to have to turn this into a fraction, and that's definitely not the quickest way. You're not going to be able to get that answer uh, in 30 seconds, okay? For maybe some of you, very, very few of you could do that, but I'm just telling you right now, uh, you got to look at how your answer is supposed to be expressed. But if you're not dealing with a multiple choice question and you just need an answer, then using decimals is a pretty good option as well. Okay, so let's move on to the mystery technique. Now, hopefully some of you or most of you out there have seen this before because that means you have seen some of my videos or seen this uh, technique when it comes to adding and subtracting fractions. But this may be my all time favorite uh, um, trick, hack, whatever you want to call it, in math. It comes in so, so handy, not only uh, with arithmetic, in other words, adding and subtracting fractions, uh, but in algebra, when you have variable fractions, things like x over y plus uh, w over z, this, techniques, this technique right here works as well. It's, it's just a must-know tool, and here is how you use it. So a bow tie, just real quick, um, for some of you out there that don't know, uh, let me just draw my little stick figure guy right here. What is a bow tie? Well, a bow tie looks like this. It's one of those little things. Hopefully you know what that uh, is, your bow tie. I don't think too many people sport these things around. Some of you might be saying, I bet this guy making this YouTube video wears a bow tie and he probably has a pocket protector and calculators and everything. No, I, I like to believe I look fairly normal in terms. I'm not uh, knocking anyone who wears a bow tie as well, but I don't wear bow ties, although I do think they are pretty cool. But anyways, if you didn't know what a bow tie is, that's what it is. And this pattern is a bow tie pattern. Okay, so keep this in mind and let's go ahead and see how this works right now. Okay, so we're going to add these fractions. I'm not even going to worry about. Now, I could reduce this fraction of 5 over 80, but let's suppose I just said, you know what, I'm going to use a bow tie technique. I got my calculator available. You can just get right into it. So here is how it works. You're going to follow a very specific pattern, okay? And the pattern kind of looks like a bow tie, hence the name. 
Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start from the bottom right, okay, the denominator to the right. This one right here, whatever's in this location, so here you have your two fractions, and this works with both adding and subtracting fractions. Okay, you can always follow this. You don't even have to think you've got your calculator. Here we go. Okay, so the bottom right, you're going to go across. You're going to multiply. So it's going to be 80 times 7 in this case. It's always this pattern. You're never going to start this way. You're going to start this way from here to here. So 80 times 7 in your calculator, that's 560. Okay, so there you go. That's step 1. So then you're going to put a plus sign because we're adding these fractions. And what we're doing is going to uh, be forming the numerator. And you form the numerator by this crisscross pattern right here. Okay, so 80 times 7 is 560. And then you're going to switch over to this denominator. And this is going to be 32 times 5. Okay, so it's uh, 80 times 7 plus. Okay, 32 times 5 is 160. Now to get our denominator, we're just going to simply multiply across. 32 times 80 is 2560. Now we're just going to go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and clean this up. 560 plus 160 right here. So we'll just finish this up. 560 plus 160 is 720 over this 2560, and you are done. Now this fraction is clearly not reduced. Okay. However, mathematically it is an accurate answer, and you can say, well, let me just turn this into a decimal. So you could take 720 and divide it into 2560, and you would get your decimal 0 0.28125. However, if let's suppose that you had a multiple choice test and you had to express your answer as a fraction. So you could do this this way and then reduce this fraction, but that wouldn't be the best way okay, to do this. What you can do is reduce this fraction to 1 over uh, 16 and go that route. But even then, the bow tie method would not be the best approach. Okay, here we have 16 and 32. These, um, it's very easy to just fix this LC, uh, this denominator up by multiplying by two, and then you have the same denominator, right? So when does a bow tie method come into uh, play, or like when is it really advantageous? Is when you um, or you know have problems where it's not easy uh, to get um, an LCD. So let me just give you some uh, problems here. Let's say I had like three over 38 plus, I don't know, 7 over 92. Okay, I'm just making this up. But right here, to get the lowest common denominator is not, you know, there's nothing obvious here. This isn't going to be like 32 and 16, and, you know, things are not going to reduce here nicely. So you could just go right into uh, the bow tie technique and just get the answer. So it would be uh, 92 times 3, and then you would go, let's just do this real quick. So 92 times 3, that would be right there, plus then you would come over here and you have 38 uh, times 7. So you'd get that answer right there over 38 times 92 right here. Now, of course, you want to have a calculator available to do this number crunching, but you would get the right answer. Okay. Now, the only downside with the bow tie technique is that the answer, the fraction answer, um, very well uh, may need to be reduced. Okay, you're not dealing necessarily with the lowest common denominator, but the but the or the answer, excuse me, is mathematically correct. Okay, all right. So again, these are different ways you can approach adding and subtracting fractions. If you have a calculator, you just need an answer. You know, whether you're dealing with a test or you're doing something else, you just need to calculate. You know. Um, you always want to stop and pause and think about the different tools you have available to you, okay? Because it's not only, you know, in mathematics in general and probably in life as well, it's not necessarily just one approach, okay? There are different ways you can approach a problem, and hopefully this was a good little fraction review. Again, if you're struggling with basic mathematics or fractions, check out my Math Foundations course. Uh, you can find it at uh, tcmathacademy.com. But hopefully this little video helped you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.